Philo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. And by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK right behind me. You see it, little warning screen. Probably gonna need it. Uh, don't forget twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream. Username is at the bottom of the screen next to me. You see it. Don't forget we do got Patreon. We post seven to ten days. I mean, we spoke. We post seven to ten times a week. Stuff that we can't watch on YouTube, including Premier League highlights. Salute to Liverpool. We lost, but you know it's okay. This is even seasoned detectives have never seen anything like this. Ashley Dell documentary. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Another warning. Hello dear friends, welcome to Crime Story Diaries. Today we'll be examining a terrifying case so I invite you to watch the video. Don't forget to leave your comments and likes. Imagine you are living a normal life, full of dreams and hopes. You are pursuing your goals, building a career, meeting friends and spending time with your family. But one day, you find yourself in the center of a... I already know this is going to be a good documentary. Bro is putting maximum effort and I like the energy. Bloody war between criminal gangs. All because you were in the wrong place, at the wrong time, with the wrong person. This was the fate of a young girl from Liverpool named Ashley Dale. She was beautiful, was smart, and ambitious. Ashley had a great job, a loving family, and a bright future ahead of her. But a fateful encounter with a man from the criminal underworld changed everything. This is a story about how one chance meeting can turn a life into a nightmare. It's about- Ladies, I hope you're listening. All ladies, all baddies love a, love a gangster, but listen. The lifestyle don't stop because you're around. It doesn't get put on pause. Ops will not pause because you there. They're going to slide anyway. Be careful. About how gang enmity can destroy the lives of innocent people. And the fact that no one is safe from the cruelty of organized crime. Today, we will tell you the shocking story of Ashley Dale. A girl who became an accidental victim of bloody showdowns in the world of crime. We will guide you through the... That's, that's a shame. R.I.P. Ashley. Maze of events that led to the tragic outcome. You will learn about the secrets, betrayals, revenge, and ruthlessness of criminals for whom human life is nothing. Ashley Dale was born into a wealthy family in Liverpool, United Kingdom. Oh, she had money. At an early age, she experienced her parents' divorce. From her mother's first marriage, Ashley had two younger sisters, Later, her mother began a relationship with Rob Jones, and soon they started living together. A boy was born into the family. Close friends described Ashley as a beautiful, smart, and charismatic girl. From a young age, she dreamed of achieving success and building a brilliant career. Ashley relentlessly pursued her goal, despite obstacles. She was driven, too. Tragedy struck the family in November 2015 when Ashley's younger brother, 16-year-old Lewis, was killed. He was brutally shot while walking along a canal in Liverpool. The criminals mistook Lewis for a member of a rival gang simply because of his curly hair. Lewis' death was a heavy blow to Ashley, but she found the strength to overcome the pain and fear. In 2017, Ashley graduated from university with a degree in environmental studies. Immediately after graduation, she got a job as an environmental cleanup specialist at Council Zero. Here, Ashley demonstrated her determination, ability to solve complex problems, and work in a team. The girl devoted a lot of time and effort to her work, but at the same time, she always looked impeccable. Ashley easily found common ground with those around her, thanks to her calm but confident nature. She devoted her free time to friends and family. This was a real outlet for her during a period of stressful workdays. 
Ashley's efforts and successes did not go on. Just a true good girl. She's a good person. Went to school, graduated uni, actually put her degree to her job, excelled in her job, and put family and friends first. Unnoticed by the company's management, and soon the girl was promoted. Promotion. This was the fulfillment of the dream she had been striving for for so long. Despite successes in her career, Ashley Dale's personal life periodically experienced unpleasant upheavals. She was dating a guy named Lee Harrison, who in many respects was her complete opposite. Despite this, the couple lived together for over five years. While Ashley had a stable nine-to-five job and was building a successful career, her boyfriend never officially worked. At the same time, Lee received a decent income, the origin of which Ashley did not know. The girl's parents did not approve of her relationship with a questionable guy who was hiding something, but they showed patience so as not to spoil the relationship with their daughter. They also believed that this couple had no future, and their daughter's chosen one was not the person who could become a decent husband and loving father. Closer to the described tragedy, Ashley was already hinting to the guy about a possible breakup, but he insisted on the opposite. Lee assured that he was ready to get married and start a family. Despite his persistence, the girl hesitated. In June 2022... Ladies, always follow your intuition. That woman's intuition, it's, it's, it's a real thing. Like 95% of the time, y'all be right. No, 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 no. Like 85% of the time, that woman's intuition be spot on. That first instinct, gotta go with it. 28-year-old Ashley and her boyfriend went to the famous Glastonbury Festival. Heard it was this. here that the girl was destined to encounter a whole group of representatives of the criminal world. Her boyfriend Lee Harrison. Did we hear about Lee Harrison? Friends came to the festival. In fact, he was a member of a gang group where he was called SZ. Lee had his own group of gangsters known as the Hillsiders. One of Lee's friends, named Sean, quarreled with his girlfriend at the festival. She joined Lee and Ashley's company at a party. This infuriated another criminal, Neil Barry, nicknamed Branch, who was at odds with Lee. When Neil saw the girl with competitors from an enemy gang, he flew into a rage. Barry couldn't calm down for a long time. Then he pulled out a large knife and began wandering around the festival grounds, threatening Lee. In this situation, Ashley was very frightened for herself and her boyfriend. The girl described to her friends the inadequate behavior of the young people from the warring groups. According to her, she personally saw Neil pull out a large knife and say he wanted to stab Lee. The enmity between the guys played a big role in all of this. The parties recalled old grievances, in particular the theft of a large batch of drugs from Barry three years ago, which Neil suspected Lee's involvement in. Ashley was very alarmed by what had happened. She feared for the fate of her loved one, because the tension between the gangs seemed to have reached a boiling point and could turn into a real war. After returning from the Glastonbury Festival, Ashley Dale was haunted by a feeling of anxiety. What's his name? She Harrison? realized that she had found herself in the very center of a conflict between criminal groups, although she herself had nothing to do with them. The girl saw how at the festival, Neil Barry, in a fit of anger... I believe I heard about this, but like very briefly. ...pulled out a large knife and threatened Lee Harrison. The scene was firmly etched in her memory and made her seriously think about how dangerous these people could be. In July 2022, Ashley shared her experiences with her friend Sophie. She said that Neil Berry attacked his acquaintance Ian Fitz. This news further alarmed the girl because it turned out that the enmity over the drug theft three years ago had not actually disappeared. Ashley explained to her friend her view of the situation. Get back got no time limit. She did not want to intervene in someone else's conflict and was not going to take anyone's side. Moreover, the girl remembered that once Neil and Lee were good friends. However, in recent years, Barry had repeatedly approached Harrison, trying to get compensation for the stolen drugs. Each time, Lee asked for a deferment, complaining about lack of funds. In fact, as Ashley knew he had money, he just didn't want to give it to Neil. 
Lee explained that he should not be responsible for the actions of other members of his group, while he himself had nothing to do with the robbery. Y'all in the gang, y'all move as one. Whatever your homies do when you in that lifestyle, you do. That's not, that's, you can't do that. Oh, they did that, not me. Them your gang, them your homies, them your members, you did it too. Guilty All this led to threats. In anger, Neil promised to come to the couple's house and deal with Lee, but then it all ended in nothing. In her messages, Ashley expressed fears that she had found herself surrounded by criminal elements because of her boyfriend, Lee. She was afraid that the anger of the bandits could also be directed against her, because at the festival she was seen with the leader of the enemy group. It just causes me a lot of anxiety. I'm constantly worried that something will happen, Neil is threatening him and all that. Is he eventually going to do something with Lee? It's a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of stuff <laughs> that happened that would not end good. You was, you was kicking it with the ops. You know what I'm saying? And you know how the ops is looking around. They looking around like, oh yeah, we got you. Kicking it with us. Ha 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 ha. Now, was she completely in the dark? She ain't know about none of this? I just couldn't handle it. Neil says he's going to come and do something, Ashley wrote to a friend. The girl admitted that she literally looks over her shoulder when she walks down the street. She thought she noticed Neil peeking out from behind a tree at the funeral of their mutual acquaintance Eric Warwick, who committed suicide shortly after the festival. I just don't want to go to Lee's funeral next. I just have a bad, bad feeling about all this. I'm constantly very tense. My nerves are shot to hell. When I'm in the car with Lee, I just feel like I'm constantly looking over my shoulder. She shared her fears. Sophie admitted that in fact- I ain't gonna lie, Ash. R.I.P. You, you, you're supposed to get up out of there. Act. Nothing was over. The girl has repeatedly witnessed Neil's aggressive behavior. He was extremely annoyed by the act of the hillsiders involved in the drug theft. In this situation, Sophie was ready to support the guy in order to avoid problems. It seemed that everything could get out of control. In a conversation with Sophie, Ashley admitted that she saw only one way out of this situation. She was going to meet with Lee and talk to him about his connections to the criminal world. The girl hoped to convince the guy to protect her from other bandits, since she was no longer part of their circle. Ashley wanted Lee to help resolve the issues, repay the debt, and get out of this vicious circle. After Eric's funeral, everyone went to the wake at the nearest restaurant. It was here that Ashley told Lee that she could have seen Neil at the farewell ceremony. After that... They were together for years? Yeah. There's no way you keep this from your girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got it. She, know, she knows. At the ex-boyfriend wanted to meet with Barry to settle the conflict. However, the girl insisted that now was not the time to do this while the situation was so tense. At that moment, relations between the warring groups were on the verge of open hostility. Lee had repeatedly received threatening messages. Therefore, and then she trying to bridge the gap? Like Ashley feared that any meeting with Neil and his bandits could be fatal for the guy. About three weeks passed after the funeral. During this time, the bandits calmed down a bit, but as it turned out, it was only an appearance. The tension continued to mount, and Ashley realized that she was in an extremely dangerous situation. She tried to shield herself from her ex-boyfriend's problems, oh, but the past would not let go. It seemed that a tragic denouement was inevitable, and the girl would not be able to avoid the fate of a victim in a brutal war of criminals. In late July 2022, disappointed and tired of the constant stress, Ashley decided to break up with Lee. Despite Lee's persistence in saying he was ready to get married, Ashley still dared to leave him. The girl hoped that this would help her avoid trouble and start a new peaceful life. However, Lee wasn't too upset and almost immediately started dating another girl, Jordan Thompson, who was a friend of Sean, with whom he had a conflict at Glastonbury. Jordan was the same girl who infuriated the bandits by switching to a member of the enemy group when her boyfriend was beaten. Naturally.
Why would Lee get with Jordan? She's a op hopper. You don't do that. How you get her is how you find her. how you how you how you get her is how you lose her. You don't play games with them types. Truly, Sean was not going to put up with such a situation. He could not forgive the betrayal. As a result, on July 22nd, Sean wrote to Neil, offering to smash Lee's car together to get revenge on him. The bandit believed that Lee's girl was also responsible for his humiliating beating at the concert. Moreover, he blamed the ex for the death of their mutual friend Eric Warwick. Despite the breakup, Ashley was still connected to many people from the gangster's circle. She knew them personally and saw how the tension in the group was growing. The girl was afraid that the anger of the criminals could also be directed against her because at the festival she was with the leader of the enemy group. During the summer, Ashley often corresponded with friends. In many messages, she expressed fear for her life. Sometimes it resembled real paranoia. At Eric's funeral, the girl was sure that she noticed Neil peeking out from behind a tree. It seemed to her that he was following her. At first, everyone attributed this to nervous tension. But later, Ashley claimed that she saw this man again. Despite the creepy feelings, she did not go to the police, perhaps fearing to infuriate the bandits even more. On August 20th, 2022, the heroine of the story was relaxing at home after work. Around 840 p.m., she heard the alarm go off in her car. At that time, she was texting with her mother and informed her about what had happened. According to the woman, over the next few minutes, her daughter wrote that the dog had begun to get nervous. Ashley said that she herself felt a growing anxiety. At 11.51 p.m., she sent her mom a photo in which she was holding her dog in her arms. The girl explained the anxiety with the rain and recent events related to the bandits and her ex-boyfriend. She didn't even suspect that the killer was already very close. At 12.30 a.m., Ashley Dale's neighbor heard a loud noise in her apartment. The girl was screaming. A few seconds later, witnesses saw her running out the back door and falling to the ground in the inner courtyard. They immediately called the rescue service, reporting a noise in the house across the street that sounded like a series of gunshots and that the wounded owner of the apartment had run out. Law enforcement officers quickly arrived at the scene. Inside the house, they found a real mess. Cartridges were scattered everywhere. The walls and floor were riddled with bullets. In the living room, the police noticed a bloody trail that led them to the backyard. There, on the ground, lay the still-alive, wounded Ashley. Oh, she was still alive. Emergency services who arrived at the scene tried to perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The girl was loaded into an ambulance in critical condition and taken to the nearest hospital. She died from gunshot wounds. As the examination showed, the first bullet tore through the liver, the second passed through the abdomen, and the third hit the right ventricle of the heart. The wild shooting resulted in injuries incompatible with life. Police found that an unknown assailant had punctured the tires on Ashley's car and also tried to set it on fire. Obviously, in this way, the owner of the car was to be lured out into the street. So why? Why? Why are they targeting her? That ain't keeping the gangsta. Go get your ops. Go get your real problem. You know what I'm saying? Go get a threat. I don't condone any type of violence, YouTube. I'm just saying. I'm just watching. The killers waited for her for some time. But realizing that the girl would stay at home, they decided to attack. Around 12.30 a.m., the attacker kicked the front door in. An unknown man in a mask burst into the house with a loaded Scorpion machine pistol. It is a fully automatic weapon. With one press of the trigger, you can fire an entire magazine. The girl tried to escape, but the criminal shot her about ten times. After that, the attacker went up to the bedroom and randomly fired five more times into the bed. Apparently, he expected that there would be witnesses or was looking for another victim. The police managed to find many witnesses to the attack, as well as witnesses to the criminal's escape from the scene of the massacre. Several people immediately saw the car that drove up to the house. Guys got out of it and started cutting tires. It's strange that none of the witnesses tried to report this to the police. Probably everyone was very scared. 
Immediately after the massacre, the criminal jumped into his car. It was later identified as a Hyundai Y30N. To find the car, the police viewed almost 2,000 hours of CCTV footage across the city. As a result, the investigators calculated- Bro jumped in his own personal car? He didn't even have a striker? He wasn't trying to not go to jail. He was, he was definitely trying to go to jail. Created the car and ran it through the databases. It turned out that the car was purchased just six days before the murder. Its owner turned out to be James Witham, a friend and accomplice of Neil Barry. Yeah. Before buying a new car, James Witham drove his old Audi. The bandit did not commit the crime against the girl alone. Several people planned the attack with him, 29-year-old Joseph Pierce and 26-year-old Neil Barry. They were able to calculate them thanks to mobile phone data. The criminal's car drove up to the house shortly before the murder. What? year old Joseph Pierce and 26-year-old Neil Barry. They were able to calculate them thanks to mobile phone data. The criminal's car drove up to the house shortly. They didn't take a striker and they took their phones. R.I.P. Ashley. Before the murder, they were tracked practically all over the city thanks to CCTV footage. Interestingly, before the crime, they calmly went to the store in a good mood, and a little later they already cold-bloodedly massacred an innocent girl. In addition, forensic scientists were able to find a lot of evidence at the site of the attack. James left his DNA on one of the cartridges when he was loading the weapon. Subsequently, traces were found on the shell casing in the victim's house. Shoe prints were also found. They completely coincided with the sneakers that were on the killer. As it turned out, he purchased them less than cooked. two days before the crime. Cooked. 100% cooked. Would you, like your, would you like your sentencing well done? Apparently. One of the first people the police spoke to was Lee Harrison. According to him, on That's the night of the attack, about. he was riding in a taxi to a party and did not hear the calls. At that moment, the police were already sure that Neil Barry and his friend Sean Zeiss were involved in the massacre. However, Lee himself was not convinced of this, focusing on the fact that they had been friends for a long time. In fact, they had no motive to attack a girl who was not involved in anything at all. The young man was very reluctant to cooperate, right. so he provided practically no valuable information to the detectives. Subsequently, the investigators described his behavior and attitude towards Ashley as cold. It seemed that he was not at all upset by the death of his ex-girlfriend. Lee turned out to be one of the least helpful witnesses during the investigation. The main task for the detectives was to find the criminals as soon as possible. During the, in he stuck to the code. investigation... R.I.P. though. This is tragic. It was found that Neil Barry tried to leave the country and go on the run. He wanted to do it, but was afraid of attention from the authorities. To divert suspicion and confuse the police, he communicated with Sean using encryption. In the dialogues, he was a man named Gaz. The deception was quickly exposed thanks to modern surveillance tools. In the form of a cipher, the criminals discussed what needed to be done in order to escape and where to go. On August 23rd at 5.43 a.m., the criminals completed their preparations. On August 24th, Neil Barry was spotted on CCTV footage. He stopped by his girlfriend named Lucy. She left the house and headed to the same place, the hotel where her boyfriend was staying. At the same time, she was driving in another car. The police realized that this was the last chance to catch the leader of the criminal group. The detectives assumed that the killer was going to spend the last night with the girl. Both arrived at the hotel around 10.45 p.m. The next morning, Neil planned to leave the country. Early in the morning on August 24th, officers broke into the hotel room. Here, the main suspect Neil was found to have 1,953 pounds, as well as a foreign passport. Brother ain't even had no money. He was going to fly to New York. The man was arrested and taken to the... What was he about to do with a thousand dollars in New York? Get a one night stay in a hotel? The police station for interrogation. Neil like Lee, was reluctant to cooperate with the police, but was able to provide some valuable information. 
According to him, on August 21st, he was with his friends, including Sean, at his apartment. Here they watched mixed martial arts on TV. A little later, the police detained Sean, thoroughly checked his mobile phone and computer. Like it US. turned out that the conspirators were engaged in large-scale criminal activities related to New York. That is why the criminal element oh, was going was to going flee to there York. in order to continue his dark business. They were engaged in providing secure communication channels for mobile phones. It is clear that such methods are most often used for criminal affairs. They themselves used closed communication channels, which the police managed to decipher. As it turned out, the criminals were supplying hundreds of customers with substances in especially large quantities. We were talking about a really large organization. Sean and Neil were engaged in sales in North Wales, and for communication they used disposable mobile phones. About 165 clients of these people were exposed. In addition, they were involved in the distribution of firearms. The bandits repeatedly bought and sold pistols, even assault rifles, for example, AK-47S. This is how the criminals managed to get their hands on the Scorpion machine pistol with which Ashley Dale was killed. Once they got jammed, a lot of stuff went crazy in Liverpool, huh? A lot of stuff stopped. A lot of stuff did, you know. Killed. That was a the halt to everyday operations. Us. The police found out where all the means for committing the crime came from. On October 9th, a month and a half after the tragic massacre, 28-year-old Sean Zeiss, 26-year-old Neil Berry, 29-year-old Joseph Pierce and James Witham were charged with conspiracy to kill Lee Harrison and the murder of Ashley. A representative of the criminal world managed to avoid reprisal, and Ashley Dale ended up under attack. In November, court hearings began. Throughout 2023, the feud that began during the music festival was considered. All this allowed the jury to understand how tense the situation was and in what conditions the girl found herself. The evidence base was also considered on the basis of CCTV footage, forensic examination, mobile phone data, and witness testimony. The prosecution insisted that Neil Berry and Sean Zeiss sought revenge on Lee Harrison, which was especially aggravated after the death of their mutual friend, Eric Warwick. The evidence base was very convincing and left no doubt about the guilt of these scoundrels. On November 20th, the jury found all four guilty of murdering the girl, conspiring against Harrison, and possessing weapons. As a result, Sean Zeiss was sentenced to life imprisonment with the right to parole no earlier than after 42 years. Neil Berry received a life sentence 42 of them. Since with the possibility of parole no earlier than after 47 years. Mm, that's Joseph that's Pierce life. was imprisoned for 41 years and James Witham for 43 years. It's over. The story of Ashley Dale is a tragic example of how the showdown bet getting out as old men. between representatives of organized crime can take the life of an innocent person. A girl who dreamed of a successful career and a happy life became an accidental victim of a cruel and senseless revenge between gangs. Unfortunately, Ashley found... She was out here living her best life, chose to be involved with the wrong person, but, you know... R.I.P., man. That ...found herself life. at the very center like of a criminal conflict because of her relationship with Lee Harrison. She had nothing to do with the criminal world, but found herself drawn into a deadly, dangerous game. The girl felt a growing threat and tried to break out of this vicious circle by breaking off relations with Lee. However, this did not save her she should have moved. from a tragic fate. The investigation into the murder of Ashley Dale showed how deeply organized crime had penetrated the life of Liverpool. Gangs involved in drug trafficking and the distribution of weapons stop at nothing for the sake of revenge and the elimination of competitors. At the same time, they do not disdain to use the most cruel methods, such as attacking a house and shooting with automatic weapons. The fact that virtually all members of the criminal group involved in the murder of Ashley received life sentences indicates the seriousness of their crime and the determination of law enforcement agencies in the fight against banditry. That might be the, the, like the, the most time I've ever seen somebody get in the UK. However, the tragedy itself shows that this struggle is not enough 
and society should pay more attention to the prevention of crime and the support of youth. The story of Ashley Dale is not just a criminal chronicle, but a warning for all of us. It reminds us of the fragility of human life in the face of cruelty and violence. This tragedy calls on us to join efforts to build a safer and fairer society where every person can realize their dreams without fear of becoming a victim of criminal lawlessness. The memory of Ashley Dale should become a reminder for all of us about the importance of humanity, compassion, and mutual support. Only together can we resist evil and prevent the recurrence of similar tragedies in the future. Ashley's life and fate is not just a sad story, but a call to action and change for the better. Traditionally, thank you for watching. The crazy thing about this story is it's probably nobody's learned a lesson from this. I just gotta keep it real. It's still good girls out here dating criminals and taking that risk and, and wanting to live that close to the edge, you know what I'm saying? Not saying that that's her case, that was her case, but like, this is an occurrence that happens often. Unfortunately, it ended in a tragedy. R.I.P. Ashley Dale.